right, so let's get started again. Welcome to Bates Botanical Boot Camp. Today we're discussing choosing the right pot or container, which can be a little bit tricky, especially if you're new to the plant world. So we're going to go through some topics, some good points to let you really let that sink in and learn about it. So size does matter with pots and containers and all plants are different. So depending on whether it's a succulent, an annual, a perennial, or even a tree, which you can keep in a container, they're all gonna be a little bit different. Um, there's different types of pots, which we'll go over. And we have a nice array of sizes and types that we will talk about. Um, so let's just get into it. Uh, small succulent pots, you'll usually want like a six inch depth for your pot. So succulent right here, their root system isn't gonna be as aggressive as um, say a Japanese maple that you might wanna keep in a pot. Annuals are gonna want about a 12 inch depth for their pot. Perennials like 12 to 18 inches. Shrubs are gonna want like 18 to two feet. And then when we go to trees, dwarf is better than like a full version of a tree, um, two to three feet for that pot. So you might be watching today for houseplants or outdoor, but we will cover all of those. So let's talk about plant pots and styles. There's about four main ones. I mean, three real main ones, but now we have fiber clay pots, which is very exciting. So plastic pots are going to be kind of the cheapest ones you can get, the easiest to move around, and they're going to hold a lot of moisture. Some of the cons with plastic pots are that they degrade really quickly, especially if they're out in sun. They'll lose color and they'll start cracking. Um, but luckily, they're super easy to replace. And with those, they're very easy to repot your plant once you're ready to take it out. And then moving on to terracotta, which we have some right here and here. Um, also a cheaper choice if you're looking to save a little bit money with pots. Um, some of the cons with those are they break super easily, especially if they're outside um, with the weather in the winter. They can freeze and crack um, and they do draw out moisture from your plant. So if you're using those as a house plant um, container, it's gonna be a little harder to keep your plant um, happy if it does like a lot of moisture. But they are cool looking. I have a lot of terracotta. Um, ceramic is gonna be our third option, which those can be a little more expensive, but those are gonna last a very long time. Um, you can keep them outside on your driveway that's not covered and weather isn't gonna really affect those as much um, as the terracotta or the plastic. They're thicker, they are still a little porous, so they're gonna help that um, your root and soil breathe a little bit more, but it's gonna hold in a little bit because of that glaze on the pot. And that's another thing that's good about ceramic um, are all the glazes and colors that are out there, which we do have a lot at Bates right now. And then the fourth one that we're gonna talk about today are fiber clay pots, which is kind of newer. It's a fiber, um, resin, and mineral mixture and so it makes a lighter pot if you can see how easily i can lift this one up yeah tyler saw that <laughs> um so that's going to be a good option especially for larger plants that you're going to want to move around um, that aren't going to stay just stationed in one spot so let's talk about indoor plants with pots first we'll start there um, so terracotta which we talked about a little bit before Great pot for succulents and cacti, again, because it's going to draw the moisture out of the soil. So you don't have to worry as much about root rot with that. Um, ceramic pots I usually use for my nice leafy plants. Um, like Monstera is good in that, Alocasia. Um, really anything with a glossy leaf is going to do a little bit better in ceramic. So let's talk about repotting and how you want to do that. So say I were to walk into Bates Nursery and find this beautiful anthurium that we just got in just in time for Valentine's Day and I want to buy this plant but I don't know what pot to put it in and so one of our helpful houseplant specialists is gonna walk in and say do you need help with something and I'm gonna say yes I want this plant but I don't know what pot to go with. What you're gonna want to do is usually size up like one to two inches. So this is in our nursery pot. It's coming from the grower. So you don't need to get too crazy with repotting it because you haven't had it for a year sitting on a window seal and growing and getting bigger. So you'll want to squeeze that a little bit. And if there's room, 
you're not going to have to size that pot up too large. So I'd say about an inch to two. Now I have a nice size right here. I don't know, Tyler, can we see this pot? You sure can. Nice. This lovely ceramic pot um, that has a saucer included, which is great for indoor plants. Um, it's got, make sure they have drain holes. Every so often there's some that have a saucer and no drain hole, just for looks. Not going to be a good choice. So you can take your anthurium to replant it, which we're not going to touch too much on repotting today. But if you have questions, ask away. Pull that plant up. You'll want to break up the roots just a little bit. Put some fresh soil in the bottom. Let that plant sit in and then fill it in um, with your fresh soil, which I suggest using our Earth Mix Indoor Proganics. Um, I use it for most of my house plants. It's really a great option um, and all my plants do really well in it. They're all very happy. Another great option for houseplants, specifically for leafy ones, not so much cacti and succulents, are caches. So if you go pot shopping and you're looking at stuff, always check at the bottom for a drain hole. You will find pots that don't have them. These are our caches. So what I would suggest doing with these instead of, instead of planting directly in them is to take your plant in your nursery pot just set it in there. Easy peasy. Now you don't have to get your hands dirty. You don't have to re worry about repotting yet. Um, and it's also going to help with watering. When you water your plant, you can let that water flow through, take the plant out, and then dump out that excess water, and you're good. Now with the cachet, you can put a hole in it. So if you were to find a pot that you really liked, doesn't have a hole, um, there are techniques that you can do to add drain holes. Um, a diamond bit, you can drill in. Um, I usually get mine wet to drill. You always run the risk of breaking your pot, so it's kind of tricky. So if you're not, um, you know, if you're worried about breaking that pot, I would suggest just using it as a cachet. Um, you can't really tell that the plant's just sitting in it and not um, fully planted. About how big do you have to make the hole? Uh, you would want to make it not too large. Um, let me see if there's a good. So I would say no bigger than the hole on this pot, which I, that's not quite an inch in diameter. I would say at least like a centimeter. You want water to be able to flow through. And if that hole's too small, um, it's going to clog it up. The water won't be able to drain out. And then you'll run the risk of um, root rot, which isn't good. That's a good question to lead into a, th a topic I was going to talk about with these drain holes. So if you notice that this one, like I said, is a little bit large, kind of as big as you would want to go if you were making your own drain hole. Can we see it, Tyler? Let me get a, a, a closer shot. <laughs> I'll take my face away from just being right <laughs> beside it. Yeah, there you go. So that's, you said that's about like what, three quarters of an inch? Three quarters, yeah. It might be a full inch. Close enough yeah. between the two. So if you find this pot, it's got a big hole in it, or you make your own hole and you're like, oh, made it too big, now all my soil runs out when I water, it's just making a mess. You can take screen um, and cut like a little square and just place that in the bottom of the pot before you put soil in. And that's gonna help keep your soil in and keep your house or porch nice and clean and free of debris. Um, I've done that with quite a few things. Is that just regular screen fabric, like for a screen door or? I've used an old screen door or screen window that I have, really any type of screen. Um, if you use like a fabric, it's gonna degrade pretty quickly because it's sitting under all that soil and all that organic matter um, and getting a lot of moisture. So I would, I mean, the best I found is just literally like a screen window that, a storm window, yeah. Oh yeah. That I took off my house because my cat, <laughs> When I moved was escaping and I didn't know how and he had ripped one little line it was coming in and out But then it was perfect for my pots and um, Keeping all of my soil all together new beginnings. Yeah, that's right. Do we have any other questions yet? T.Y. We actually did get a question from Nicole um, If we have a tree that's still small Meyer lemon mm -hmm. should we repot it into what we think will be its max size pot even though it definitely doesn't need that size just yet that is a great question, Nicole, I believe. Yep. Yes. Um, 
If that pot is a lot larger, no. I, with my lemon tree I've had for like two years, I size up about two inches um, with it. Now, if you go too large, that's when you run the risk of root rot, especially with those, um, cause they do like to be a little on the drier side. Um, so if that pot is like four inches big and up and you're putting it in a pot, um, you know, that's too big, that root system is gonna try to spread out too kind of wildly um, and it's gonna hold in too much moisture. So you wanna just size up just a little bit. You wanna have room for new growth to allow um, the roots to spread, but you don't want it to be too much room if that makes sense yep uh nicole i have a uh i don't know it's probably four year old orange tree at this point and i've sized it up twice so i saw that the other day yeah i think that's that's pretty healthy and i'm eventually just going to stop because i don't want it to get so big that i i can't move it around yes it's probably got one more size up in its life and then i'm going to try and keep it pretty compact yeah so once you're plants get bigger like we can kind of segue to more outdoor things um you know the lemon trees lime trees you have to bring indoor in the winter they're gonna eventually get big it's a tree um what i have my lemon tree in is a fiber clay pot so we have them here this is one of our smallest sizes that we have outdoor um we have them as large as like what would that be like 20 inches 20 inches i was gonna be like two feet two feet 24 yeah they get pretty large um so if you want that lemon tree to keep growing year after year and get big i would suggest a fiber clay pot for it because it is going to be a little bit easier to move in and out because with those plants those will be moving inside outside with our climate here you can't leave them out um i actually have two fiber clay pots one is probably like three feet tall and three feet wide that I have one of my large cacti in, which it's still super heavy, but had I put it in a ceramic pot, it never would have made it inside this winter because it's so large and just has so much weight in it when you're trying to move it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot. Stephanie's got a question. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is related to citrus. How many hours of full sun does a a lemon tree need? At least six. Um, I have my lemon tree just in my brightest window that gets as much sunlight as possible. And it's doing okay in the winter. I don't, they never do. Mine never does like great when I bring it in because it doesn't get, um, probably gets like five hours of sunlight. So. And Stephanie, I'm a crazy man. Uh, <laughs> Tyler is a crazy I'm, man. I'm, a, I'm wild. I got a grow light and uh, it's currently, I'm getting right around 14 hours of light to my lime and uh, orange trees. And they're looking healthy and green. Um, I'm still, because I'm giving them so much light, I still have to kind of be mindful of yellowing and like fertilizing them because they are trying to produce. And I've got a couple little fruit budding on it. You do. You put pictures on your social media the other day. Yeah. They're tiny and cute. It's a struggle because I feel like the, the temperature is cooler. So it's not necessarily encouraging full growth, but what i've gotten i've gotten new leaf growth it's healthy i think a grow light is a super help to citrus in the winter Mm -hmm. i've never really worked with grow lights that much but we do have a great webinar that vanessa did yep on grow lights if you all about grow lights you can determine the uh how how much spread the light gives per watt i believe like Mm -hmm. it's uh, there's a ratio between inches and watts that gets you the right thing for your plants um Going switching back to pots, uh, Lee asks, uh, "Would you recommend a spray glaze for your terracotta pots?" I've used. Um, if you're talking about just kind of sealing it or just you know helping it uh, hold its integrity year after year, um, it might yeah, be a sealant question. Yeah, I've used just Mod Podge before because um, I like the look of uh, terracotta for my indoor plants, but. I'm not great at watering. And like I said, that moisture is just drawn out like immediately, you can see it in the pot. Um, So I have sealed quite a few of mine and it's helped a lot. I do, after I seal it, um, I put it outside to let it get weathered. So in case there's any toxins in that, it's not gonna affect your plant. Awesome. Well, that's all the questions we have for now. So Perfect. Let's keep going. Carry on. Um, carry on. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I didn't introduce myself in the beginning. 
I'm Caroline, <laughs> by the way. Welcome. Um, one more thing on that lemon tree, because you did ask about light. Once I put it outside um, in the summer, once it hits above like 50 degrees at night, I just put it in full sun Yep. on my back porch, and it does great. It'll take off. Mm -hmm. It will take off. All right, so we were talking a little bit about trees, those fiber clay pots, um, they get bigger. One thing with the fiber clay pot, um, if you get, get it to plant a larger tree, a shrub might be all right because they're not quite as heavy and they don't grow as tall. You wanna think about the weight of your pot and the root system of whatever you're planting in it. So if I were to plant my Japanese maple, which I do have one in a pot, but it's a ceramic pot, um, as that grows larger, especially if it's outside and getting wind, um, if it dries out, that pot's gonna topple over if it's too light. So that is another thing to think about, so many things. Um, so like I said, with my Japanese maple that I have in a pot, I have it in a ceramic pot. And with those, um, it's pretty popular. I mean, we sell them in pots, people keep them in them. I've seen them a lot. I think probably half of the Bates employees here have them. Japanese maples in pots. Um, you wanna do that a little bit differently. So I said like size up one to two inches, um, three to four if the, your plant is really root bound. With the Japanese maple, maple specifically and you know other trees, you're gonna wanna size up a little bit bigger. With mine, I went almost twice as big as the root ball. So once I pulled my plant, um, we'll just look at this Ethereum again, out of its pot, root ball right there, I sized up about twice as much for that pot. Um, and like I said, I went with a heavier pot, so it wasn't going to fall over. And because that pot is a little bit deeper, because that root, root system is a little more um, intricate and larger, uh, I did some pine finds in the bottom. So you don't have to do full um, potting soil, which I'll talk about the potting soil I used in a moment. But I filled the bottom of that pot because that pot's like probably about three feet tall because I wanted it to have plenty of room for growth pine finds in the bottom which I have a little sample right here can we see it Tyler absolutely how's that exquisite yeah so it's light it's, it's not going to be too heavy um so if you needed to move your Japanese maple hopefully you don't I'm going to plant mine in ground um one day some people use rocks or gravel in the bottom, which is fine, but that's just going to add to the weight of that pot. Um, so this keeps it a little bit lighter, um, and you have that organic matter still in there. It'll break down, too. And it'll break down, yeah. The rocks won't break down. You'll just have rocky soil. Those rocks will not break down. And then what I've come in, um, one problem I've hit with rocks is, you know, your roots start growing around it, and when you go to transplant it or put it in the ground you have to you don't have to get them out but you have this great soil layer and then just like a couple inches or an inch of just gravel or rock which you I mean clearly if you're planting it in the ground you would want to break that up a little bit before sticking it in uh, we have a Facebook question mm -hmm. from Shauna um, she has a philodendron uh, is it saloon mm -hmm. uh, my tree is huge and already in a large pot. It, I'm almost intimidated by it, uh, <laughs> thinking I need to separate it. Any tip, tips? Any to tips? Do? Yes. So if, <laughs> if you've sized out of your pot, especially for philodendron, which you can split, I would suggest taking it out and splitting it. Um, yeah, because once it gets to a certain size, you can't get, you can't go any bigger, which I've run into with my cacti which you can't split, so they're just in those pots forever. But with that philodendron, I would suggest um, just taking it out. You can see, um, I wish I had one that we could look at, but there's great YouTube tutorial videos online. Um, take it out, you can see where like the main root um, system for each plant, because it is shooting off like little, little children. Um, and you can split it, you can use a sterile knife if you need to cut into it, if it's really root bound, um, and then just split it up into new pots. And then you have maybe 10 more plants depending on the size of that spooky scary philodendron <laughs> it's a little intimidating it's like having a litter yeah a litter of um philodendron kittens mm. oh that's pretty cute <laughs> are there any more questions uh not currently no i'll keep monitoring keep monitoring um okay so we were talking about outdoor planters we touched on trees and on what to put in the bottom of those again rocks are great if you have a tree in a planter or a shrub and you have that planter somewhere where you're not going to move it and you want it to be 
really stable, especially like if you bumped it with a lawnmower, you know, you don't want it to fall over. Rocks are a good option with that. Um, if you're not planning on really repotting it anytime soon, it's going to add weight and it's going to be more stable. You know, uh, some of our outdoor containers, we just use broken pieces of cinder block. So That's they're, true. They're yeah. kind of really coarse and heavy, but they won't get lost in your soil. Mm -hmm. I break a lot of pots. And so oh, yeah. I use broken pots in the bottom of my pots that I haven't broken yet. Oh, let's talk about the Isle of Misfits, shall we? That here at we the nursery? Have here? Yeah, um, the broken pots that we have. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, <laughs> what were you saying, Tyler? No, Take it away. We have the pieces of pots that are just usually, I think we set them out, right? We do. We don't have any right now, um, but we probably will soon because we're getting a lot of pottery in and with shipping pottery, it's all breakable. Um, you know, we'll get some in broken or when we're checking it in, you know, sometimes accidents happen. And so we do sell broken pottery that you can use in the bottom of pots or for projects. We have people that pick it up to do mosaics. Um, yeah, fun things like that. Yeah, just a fun fact. Just a fun fact, yeah. Got a question from Lee here. Mm -hmm. um, how do fiber clay pots do with temperature changes? They do fine. The biggest thing with the fiber clay pots outside um, is they degrade pretty quickly. Um, we found that we put some of ours in irrigation or they just got hit with our irrigation here last year and it left like staining and makes it a little more brittle. So I would suggest with fiber clay, if you're going to have that outside to go with the lighter color because the darker colors really, you know, that that stuff shows up. But they are pretty durable, like physically durable. Awesome. Um, Angela's got a question here. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you need to refresh the soil in the pots? I have some containers that have had the plants in them for several years. Yes. Uh, well, I'm assuming maybe you're talking about just a mixed planter, which we haven't touched on too much yet. Uh, maybe you're switching out annuals, perennials. Um, you can refresh the soil when you take out Again, if you are talking about just an annual pot, when you switch it out, you can put fresh soil and mix it up, or you can fertilize and mix that fertilizer in. Um, I would suggest doing that in the spring before stuff really starts growing. Did that answer that, Angie? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll give her a second to respond. Um, you know, I, I recently, again, talking about my citrus, this is the best example of containers that I've had for an extended period of time, uh, have... With, especially with my orange tree i kind of pulled it out of the pot i took a look at the roots because uh, the kind of the central tap root is is almost to the bottom so sometimes you can trim those back yeah when they grow out of the bottom mm -hmm. um it helps kind of keep your tree at a more dwarf size yeah you can just cut them out and yep. then i and then i added some fresh soil on the bottom and around and then kind of the top too oh, just, you freshened it up a little bit yeah i mean it gives it a little boost to when was the last boost. time you um repotted your citrus like how long has it been in the pots there and now um i did it this year okay. so it's i mean for the orange it had been about two years mm -hmm. the lime i just got so i potted it up with proganics nice indoor. and fresh yeah. yeah but it's doing well and, and the moisture retention on proganics indoor is great it is great um my philodendron back to that philodendron splitting question um i started using the earth mix with my house plants a few years ago when I discovered it uh, before I started working here and my plant, my indoor plants do so much better. And the philodendron I've had for years was so happy um, when I repotted and switched out the soil. Um, let's see. Lee's asking, are there any types of containers you avoid at all costs? I don't like metal containers, which we haven't talked about at all. Um, that's we can get there. probably just a matter of of preference with me um there's really not a lot of issues with them they rust a little bit um but that i avoid at all costs no i like them all they all seem pretty good we were going to talk a little bit about um more unusual pots towards the end or things that you can use like tires cinder blocks bathtubs um we'll touch on that a little bit but just to wrap up, um, our trees in containers, again, you're going to want to go like two to three feet, depending on that tree size. And if you don't have a tree in mind, per se, but you want to have a tree in a pot out in your yard, um, you'll want to go for more of like a dwarf variety, something smaller within that species um, that's not going to grow into a you know large mature tree unless you plan on transplanting that into the ground later. And one thing that I have used with my Japanese maple that I planted and I have a couple other um, 
conifers in pots is our landscape I found works really well for those outdoor plants um, which we don't have an example in here right now but you could come see us of landscape of landscape yeah we do have samples of all of our soil and mulch products at the garden center checkout area yes we do so I would suggest for outdoor containers um, landscape or we do make an outdoor container mix so Proganics Outdoor. Proganics Outdoor, which I also use for my mixed planters, which we will segue into that now. Um, so mixed planters are a great addition to your front porch. There's a lot of employees here at Bates Nursery that love their mixed planters. We talk about them all year. Can't wait for spring when we can start those. Um, with the mixed planters, you can go really any size. I know Ben has like a one gallon two mixed planters on his front porch, so about this size. You're not gonna be able to fit as much in there and those plants are gonna outgrow that pretty quickly. And then, um, you know, I have like a medium, probably about this size, planters on either side. And then Austin has giant planters because he loves his mixed planters. So with those, um, like I was saying, I use just an outdoor, our Proganics outdoor mix for that. And, um, you can really go with any size. It just depends on the plants. There's so many different kinds. I have an annual and perennial mix for my mixed planters. Um, and I refresh it throughout the year. So, yes. Oh, well, Mel <laughs> Melissa, uh, who works in our greenhouse, mm -hmm. did a, I think, was it fall container? or She did a container gardening. Yeah. And then we've also got uh, upcoming a webinar called Container Gardening Through the Seasons. Ooh, that is a good one because yeah. there is so much you can do with that. Um, you can put bulbs underneath, then your annuals, and then the bulbs will go th grow through that, um, and you'll get some, you know, greenery and stuff early, early spring. Yep, it's and exciting. Then perennial fixtures can carry you through summer, and then you can even remove some and plant into it, and just keep that thing churning out greenery. Keep it going. Um, with your mixed planters outside, I would suggest steering clear of terracotta or just non-sealed terracotta. Like we touched on earlier, you can seal it and um, places also s sell it sealed. So it's going to hold in that moisture. If you were to have just giant terracotta planters on your front porch, especially in the sun, you're going to be watering those in the summer like twice a day because those pansies are going to dry out. Well, we're not going to have pansies in the summer, but those annuals are going to dry out pretty quickly. <laughs> Uh, Patty's asking, what kind of pots do you recommend for violets? For violets? Yep. Um, I would go with the, just a plastic or ceramic pot. Um, plastic would be great for them because it's going to hold that moisture in. And I'm assuming you're going to have that outside in like the spring and summer. Okay. And then Therese is asking, uh, can you plant any companion plants in a small fruit tree pot or does that conflict with the roots? Um, so when you have those plants, especially like edible plants that are producing something in a pot, um, they're really going to be eating up a lot of nutrients. So you can do companion planting, especially when it comes to herbs and veg vegetables. Um, you would want to get a bigger planter, and I would suggest like a rectangle or square size where you can kind of space them out. It would be a little bit hard um, with berries to plant that companion plant in the pot because they're really going to be competing for nutrients in the soil. Perfect. <laughs> All right, so we'll talk a little bit about um, pots in the winter. So we're in the winter right now, and you come to the time where your pots are going to start breaking, and you need to make sure you know this fabulous pot that you bought and you love isn't going to split and crack um, as the temperatures, you know, rise and fall. So if you have a pot outside that has a saucer in the bottom, you'll probably want to try to bring that in. Um, or make sure there's not a lot of water sitting in the saucer, you know, after it rains and then if it's going to freeze that night. It's a little bit tricky, but you'll want to just dump that out. Um, we do have pot feet here that will help. So if you have those outdoor planters and you don't want to run the risk of it sitting on the ground, holding water, and then that water freezing, expanding, and cracking your pot, um, you can place these feet under your pot to get it lifted a little bit, give it like an inch or so, and help with drainage which we have, here's one right here. We'll just do a little close up on that. Let's get two. Oh, it looks like a little uh, 
like a doggy. <laughs> it does. They're and they're cute. So that's another plus for that. Um, but I have some on my outdoor pots outside. Outdoor pots outside. Clearly, those are outside. Um, <laughs> <laughs> to help just get them off the ground um, and it's going to help your pot last a little bit longer we do have frost proof pots here so those are going to be able to withstand that um, temperature change and those freezing temperatures and ice a little bit better um, terracotta is prone to cracking in the winter um, once it gets wet and if that soil freezes again it's really lightweight so when everything expands it's going to put too much pressure on it um, so plastic feet are a great way to go um, yeah, so let's look at some of these other pots that we have up on this table that I'm sure you guys are all wondering, what is that and what does it do? So we were just looking at this, these pot feet sitting in this orchid, sorry, not an orchid pot, bonsai pot. So we have a lot of different pots. I mean, maybe you, you've come to Bates and you've seen all these different varieties that we have. Um, we've got our bonsai pot here. I don't know if we can see it, if we're still... Uh, you can you can pick it up a little bit if, it, if raise it up. Don't mm -hmm. want to drop it. That would be sad. So with bonsai, you want that to be shallower. That root system isn't going to go as um, strong because you want that plant to stay a smaller size. But it does have these wires in here that you can um, kind of wrap around the roots to help hold your plant in. If you're into bonsai and you, or you want to start, if you want to try it, we have the supplies here for that. Um, in front of that bonsai pot, we also have this reflective pot, which Vanessa and I touched on in our um, fern webinar, which we did, I believe, last week, maybe the week before. I think it was last week. Could have been three weeks ago, last week. Oh, wait, fern care. That was a ways ago. <laughs> <laughs> it was two months ago. No, it was. No, it was. <laughs> Either way, that's archived and you can go back and watch it. Um, but if you have like a smaller plant that you need um, to add a lot of humidity to for, um, for it to grow, um, that's a great option. You can put water in one side, plant in the other, and that's going to really work that humidity. There we go. And Nora's got the link there. For that indoor fern care. Mm -hmm. Then we've got this nice hanging pot um, right up front. Great for succulents or for trailing pothos, trailing philodendron, um, so many option. String of hearts, which we don't have in stock right now, sadly. It's Valentine's Day and it would be a great um, gift. But hanging, it's gonna give you a little bit more um, room if you have a lot of house plants like I do. I probably, I've started making macrame and hanging so many things so I have more space um, for all of my plants. Uh, is there is there a big distinction between like an indoor hanging pot and an outdoor hanging pot, would you say? Not a huge one. I mean, most outdoor hanging pots are just the plastic nursery pots or something that is similar to that that is a little more elaborate um, because they weather a little bit better. And um, what about those hangers that have cocoa liner is that is that for a special purpose or not necessarily um it's kind of the look the cocoa liner will degrade after you know a season or two i mean i've had one last for a while but it's just a different type of hanging basket or window basket there's a lot of different types that you can use it for cool um nicole has another question mm -hmm. when bringing new plants home should we repot right away or give it time to adjust to the new surroundings i give mine time to adjust so i'll bring mine home and usually wait um a couple weeks for it to kind of acclimate to my house and the climate in my house um and then you can tell if it's time to repot them like if you want to keep it in the nursery pot and you can tell it's not root bound and has you know a little bit room to grow you can leave it in there put it in a cache like we talked about earlier or just set it in the pot that you're going to eventually want to put it in um, but if you do bring that home and it's root bound sometimes you can see roots growing out of the top and again if you squeeze the pot and there's not a lot of give it might be about time to repot it so i would give it like a week or two to acclimate and then go ahead and repot it and make sure you break those roots up when you repot it so they can start spreading are there any other questions? Uh, I'm not seeing uh, any at the moment. Um, you want to do? Is there anything else we haven't? I think that was about it. We've talked about our pots. Um, what about 
unconventional oh, containers. Oh, unconventional. Yes. So there's a lot that you can go with. I mean, you could you can grow anything in almost anything. So cinder blocks, Tyler and I were talking about that earlier today. I've actually used that um, before. Just like set it, you know, clear, clear the grass, put the cinder block on the ground and plant it in there. It helps contain that whatever you're growing, but also those roots can eventually like spread down into the ground. So they're not stopped at the bottom of a pot. Um, same goes with old tires. It's a great way to repurpose tires. You can do one or stack them, um, grow plants in there. Potatoes. I've grown potatoes and tires because mm. you can start shallow, start your potatoes and you keep adding soil and you can add tires as you go. Oh man. Yeah. It's fun. I've also used dog food bags for potatoes. I forgot about that until just now. Wow, that's cool. Because you, you mm -hmm. can keep mounting them and get more, right? Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Keep it growing up. Bathtubs, we touched on that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen toilets. Very classy. Um, Actually, in my backyard, um, we used an old dark room sink. Now, it had oh. long been past its purpose. So it's, it had been cleaned of chemicals and things like that. But it has three different bays, so we used it for three different herbs that mm -hmm. we planted into. That's a great and idea. You know, it's probably like three feet off the ground. Yeah. Yeah, there's so many different options. I mean, basically, if it holds dirt and isn't going to poison your plant, which is one thing to think about. So if it's, you know, you wouldn't want to use like an old gasoline can or something because that will probably kill your plant right away. But if it's some kind of non-toxic thing that will hold soil and preferably has some drainage, um, you can use it and you can plant, you know, anything in a container. They will outgrow it eventually though. It's the one thing that you have to remember. Can't stay in it forever. Did we, uh, did we cover the cactus? Like adding cactus mix and stuff? We didn't talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's so, it's here. It, it is right here, um, which we do have a little fairy tale cactus up here. Um, so like I was saying, terracotta, it's my go-to um, for cacti planting. We'll bring this little adorable bad boy up here. Cacti. <laughs> it's, so <adorable. laughs> it's so little. <laughs> this is one of my it. favorites, a fairy tale cactus. I've had one for probably about eight years. Um, it's looking a little sad right now, but it's still going. So there are specific um, soils for plants that you're growing. You wouldn't want to just put, you know, your plant in anything. Our indoor here does hold a lot of moisture. Um, so if you wanted to use that for succulents or cacti, I would suggest mixing perlite. Um, I mix pine fines into mine. Um, but if you're not into mixing your own soil and creating your own special mix, um, we do have a cactus and succulent mix that you can purchase here that's going to help with drainage. Um, it gives a little more air um, for the root system and it's going to help with root rot. So if you're prone to overwatering, um, that's going to be a good option to go for instead of just using like a standard soil. Uh, yeah, soil is a whole other thing. I know Justin did. Did he do soil and mulch? That's that's last Friday's. Last last Friday, Justin did soil and mm -hmm. mulch. So if you're new to planting, especially growing in containers, um, that would probably be a good one to watch because there's so many different types of soils out there. Um, when I started, I I knew there was like you know Miracle Grow and indoor, but I didn't really know about all the different things. And I would just grow, you know, I get one bag for everything. And then you learn that it doesn't work that way. They don't do as well um, in the soil that's not made specifically for their needs. So cactus mix is great for your cacti and also the terracotta pots are gonna help draw out that moisture and keep it from rotting. Yeah, that's one benefit you can take advantage of with them. Mm -hmm. If they like it drier, terracotta is probably the way to go. Yes, and if you don't like watering, also, <laughs> yeah. terracotta is a great way to go. Yeah. Well, cacti are a great way to go. Um, and then we can talk about this little copper spoon calancho that fits into this pot perfectly. So if you notice the pots like, because this plant's small, it's probably half an inch bigger in diameter than the top of this calancho. So this would be a perfect size for this little guy to, um, you know, spread its roots and grow a little bit more, but not too much to where it's going to rot a little bit. Uh, mm. Heather has a question. If a plant dies in a container, do I need to dump the soil and start over? Um, 
If you think that it could have been like a fungal thing or a pest, I would. Um, if I lose plants and I'm not sure why, I'll usually just dump the soil outside away from all my other plants and start fresh. Now, if you know it was just a matter of over or underwatering, especially underwatering, um, you can mix in fresh soil as long as you're sure, um, you know, it's free of pests or fungus. And Lee has another question. Mm -hmm. I have some nice pieces of wood from a silver maple tree that I thought I would make a cool, would make a cool mix planters. Should I try to seal or varnish the wood first? Also, do you clean or bleach old pots? Um, I don't clean or bleach my old pots because uh, I like how they look, you know, with weathered and worn. Um, you can clean them. I would suggest maybe using vinegar. It's not as harsh and it's more natural. Um, and then letting that sit out in the sun to, you know, get any kind of leftover cleaner off of it. Uh, if you do use bleach, yeah, just be mindful. Let it sit out for a little bit. With the fresh wood, I assume that's not treated, I would suggest possibly sealing it because um, it seems like it's going to rot pretty quickly depending on what you plant in it and how often you're watering. Do you have thoughts on that one, Tyler? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, termites are my biggest mm. concern because, I, I mean, I, I built a raised bed uh, with just untreated pine and they colonized the bottom of it and started hollowing out hollowing it out so if if that wood has contact with like the soil you might w expect that now if it's just something that's pretty and you don't care and you want it to degrade over time that's fine um but uh you know maple i think is still in the risk category for that if it was cedar i would say oh yeah cedar will yeah i last. would say yeah cedar would be better and so you might want to look into sealing that with something mm -hmm. or you can make it and you know not use it as a full planter, use it as a cachet. Yeah, and you could also, I mean, if you wanted to do something indoors with it, um, mm -hmm. you know, that would kind of reduce that risk factor. But I mean, I imagine it, it seems kind of, it would be bigger and heavier, probably something for outside. I've, I know that people have planted into like stumps before too. I've planted in stumps and then I've used, um, like my neighbor cut down a lot of trees on his farm and I used, you know, I cut all the branches and used the trunks as um, a what is the word I'm looking for? A liner for my garden bed? A wall? Oh, yeah. A what? border. A border. <laughs> Thank you, Tyler. <laughs> Words are hard sometimes. As a border for my garden bed. Um, it lasted, it did well for a season and then, um, you know, started to break down, which was fine for the soil. It added into it, but it didn't last for, for too long. Yeah. Do we have any other questions? Uh, so I think we're kind of approaching the end of our session here. So if you have any questions, please enter them into the chat. Facebook people, we see you too, so you can ask away over there. We'll we'll get to you, um, and and uh, we'll just kind of take a moment, see if anybody has anything. If not, we'll go ahead and wind it down. We'll hang out. Um, webinars coming up next week. I know Austin's doing roses. Uh, give me one second. Let me pull up our. And then I, I have Medicinal Plants 101 on Friday, yes, which will be fun and exciting. So if you've ever wanted to learn about uses and ways to grow um, plants that serve a medicinal purpose, we will be discussing that, um, just a very basic start for that. Okay, February 16th, Planting for Biodiversity with Joy Bovin. <gasps> Ooh, that one will be good. Now, this one's going to probably be weather permitting because uh, I heard we're getting some snowfall sometime <laughs> in between there. Um, regardless, we're, we're, we're still carrying on like it's going to be Tuesday morning. If not, we'll send uh, our Zoom registrants an email if we change the time. It'll probably just be Wednesday if we do that morning. Uh, and speaking of Wednesday, Austin Lowen is doing Roses, February 17th. Uh, roses 101. Austin is, uh, that's kind of a, a favorite of his. As long he loves with Roses. Ranges. It's going to be a great webinar. Yeah. And then Probably Medicinal last Plants, while. February 19th. And, um, and then rounding out the rest of February, how to create uh, springtime container gardens. Boom. Ooh, with yeah. Austin. There you go. <laughs> Uh, and then February 25th, Introduction to Landscape Design with Ben Tress. That's going to be great because we have a lot of people who come here to the nursery and they're just like, I have ideas and I need to get them out. And, and or they, they're just like, you know, where do we start? Um, we want to put something across, you know, in this bed we just opened up or tore out. 
that's a good one mm-hmm. to jump into. Yeah, and Ben is very knowledgeable in that field. Yeah. It'll be great. So let's see. I don't see any other questions here. Let me s- check Facebook real quick. Um, and, you know, we have a newsletter. It goes out monthly. If you want to sign up for that, um, you can uh, sign up on our boot camp page from there you go i posted that into the chat yeah it looks like we're good all right well we are still getting a lot of pottery shipments in here at Bates. if you haven't been here in the last few weeks um we have tons of indoor and outdoor pottery coming in you can always come in with any questions you can bring any plant that you need repotted we do repot um offer that service so come on in and see us Hope you have a lovely day.